Hi all, Namrata here and you are watching Simulink tutorial and today we are going to discuss MBD interview questions part 7. So let's start with today's video. So the first question is what are parallel states? So parallel states are exclusive and states that is imagine there are two parallel states on a given level. So both will be active. So state A and state B that is exclusive and both will be active whereas if states are exclusive or so in that case only one state at a given level will be active that is either A or B. So how parallel states execute? So they are active at the same time but execute in a sequential manner. So to demonstrate that I have this chart. So if you look at this state diagram state in it and straight up threshold cross check these are exclusive or states that is at a time either in it or a threshold cross check state will be active only one of them not both will be active at the same time whereas if you look at the states inside a threshold cross check the states are with some order that is this is one this is two and they have dotted outline so these are parallel states so error condition and error result will be both active at the same time when a threshold cross check state becomes active so even though they will be active at the same time they will execute in a sequential manner so to make a state exclusive and you go to decomposition and check this option exclusive and that is parallel. So you can see that even init and up threshold cross check are now also with dotted outline. This control Z. So I'll just quickly explain you the logic for this state diagram. So by default that is in init output will be 0 and high warning and high error will be false. When the status of the input signal is valid that is 0 the execution will go to a threshold cross check and when the input status is invalid that is it is not equal to 0 it will go to again init and assign zero value to output and false to high warning and high error. So let's check what is happening in this up threshold cross check state. So in error condition that is first parallel state what is happening? We are initializing count with zero and if input is greater than or equal to 4.5 count will be incremented. If it is less than 4.5 the count will be assigned with value zero. Now let's check what is happening in the error result. So in error result we are checking if count is greater than or equal to 1000. If it is greater than or equal to 1000 the high error will be assigned with value true. So in this case we are setting the error and output will be 0. Else if count is greater than or equal to 500 the high warning will be set to true and output will be half of the actual input that is 50 percent else if count is below 500 the high warning will be assigned with value false high error will be assigned with value false and output will be equal to input so just to summarize if input status is valid do some processing if input status is not valid output will be zero if input status is valid then check if input is greater than or equal to 4.5 if it is greater than or equal to 4.5 increment the count and based on the count set the warning or error and I have given input as 5 0 and minus 5 and status signal ranging from 0 to 1 and if I simulate this you can observe the execution which state is active so
first the init the transition of input status being equal to valid we move to a threshold cross check and you can see here that both the states were active inside a threshold cross check the moment of threshold cross check state becomes active one more thing people may wonder how to change the execution order of the states so just right click on a state then go to execution order and you can change the execution order from here so you can see that the execution order for error condition is 2 and error result is now 1 now let's simulate this one and see what happens so you can see that it gave an error that is the data count was read before being written to chart okay so while designing the parallel states make sure you are giving the correct execution order because giving the wrong execution order may lead to incorrect behavior so that's how parallel states work active at a time but execute in a sequential manner so moving on to next question that is ways in which you can implement switch construct so here i have taken sine wave chirp signal addition of both signals and a constant and based on the case i want to pass this signal to the output so if case 1 then pass sine wave case 2 chirp signal case 3 addition and default case that is if the input value is other than 1 2 or 3 pass 1 to the output so let's see how to implement switch construct using multiport switch so this is the input so this is the case selection variable and we have straight away taken these signals inside and provided it to the multiport switch so this is for case 1 this is for case 2 this is for case 3 and this is for default case if i double click on this block you can see here the number of data ports four since we have three cases and one default and data port for default case is last data port you can select last data port or additional data port if i select additional data port let's see what happens so it will add one more port that is this fifth with asterisk symbol and that will act as default port so i'll just switch to last data port as default okay and whichever case it is it will select the input out of that and pass it to the output so that was multi port switch the other way is using switch case and action subsystem so this is the switch case block to which you provide the case variable that is the case selection input if i double click on this you can see here that case conditions so you can provide the number of cases so we have three cases 1 2 3 and show default case is checked that is why it is showing as default if i uncheck it and apply you can see now it is just showing case 1 2 and 3 there is no default and the output of this switch case block goes as an enable signal to each switch action subsystem so for the first one we are giving sine wave signal 
for second one we are giving chop signal for third one we are giving the addition of both signals and for the last one we are giving the constant one as the output and the way we saw last time while using if and if action subsystem we finally merged all the signals together since we want ultimately one output similarly we are using here the merge block to merge all four signals to get one output based on which subsystem is active so this is switch case and switch case action subsystem and the third option is using flow diagram so we'll just zoom in you can see here to the chart we have input that is case selection input variable a as a sine wave b as a chirp signal c as addition of sine wave and chirp signal and d as the constant and there is one output from this chart so the logic is very simple if input is equal to equal to 1 output will be a input is equal to 2 output will be b input is equal to 3 output is equal to c and default is d that is if input is other than 1 2 or 3 output will be d now you might think that okay i'm just uh, assigning the values straight away here so this is for the logic i have designed here so if there is very complex logic here you will have some operations going on like function calls like if case is 1 then call this function assign this output if input is equal to 2 assign this value call this function and so on so here there will be action that you want to execute based on your case okay so this is just a very simple example that is if this is the case the action will be here and and it depends on the requirement what it is so this is how we implement switch case construct using flow diagram multiport switch and switch case and switch case action subsystem if i simulate this all of them have same output so if input is 0 the output is 1 if input is 1 output is sine wave input is 2 output is chirp signal input is 3 output is addition input is 4 output is 1 input 5 default case output 1 and the last case is 1 so sine wave so which one to use in which case so multiport switch you can see here there is no enable so here will be straight away of processing so if you want to avoid execution of complex operations for all cases you can go for this switch case and action subsystems so operation of only one case will execute in runtime and same is for this switch using flow diagram whereas here if the operation is very simple not complex or assigning just values in that case you can go for multiport switch so that is how you implement switch case using these three methods so i hope you are clear about all the questions that we discussed today and I hope these videos are helpful to you to prepare for interviews. So that's all for this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and keep watching and keep learning.